Hello, I am going to start reading a new book called The Incredible Journey. It's written by Sheila Burnford. The Incredible Journey. Um, each, if you order these books online, the pages will be different. So I'll just go by the chapters. Chapter one. This journey took place in a part of Canada, which lies in the northwestern part of the great sprawling province of Ontario. It is a vast area of deeply wooded wilderness, of endless chains of lonely lakes and rushing rivers. Thousands of miles of country roads, rough timber lanes, overgrown tracks leading to abandoned mines and unmapped trails snake across its length and breadth. It is a country of flat, of far-flung lonely farms and a few widely scattered small towns and villages, of lonely trappers, shacks, and logging camps. Most of its industry comes from the great pulp and paper companies who worked their timber concessions deep in the very heart of the forest and from the mines, for it is rich in minerals. Prospectors work through it. There are trappers and Indians and sometimes hunters who fly into the Virgin Lakes in small amphibious aircraft. There are pioneers with visions beyond their own lifespan and there are those who have left the bustle of civilization forever to sink their identity in an unquestioning acceptance of the wilderness. But all these human beings together are as a handful of sand upon the ocean shores. And for the most part, there is silence and solitude and an uninterrupted way of life for the wild animals that abound there moose and deer, brown and black bears, lynx and fox, beaver, muskrat and otter, fishers, mink and marten. The wild duck rests there and the Canada goose, for this is a fringe of the central migratory flyway. The clear tree fringed lakes and rivers are filled with speckled trout and steelheads pike, and pickerel, and whitefish. Almost half the year the country is blanketed with snow, and for weeks at a time the temperature may stay many degrees below zero. There is no slow growth of spring, but a sudden short burst of summer when everything grows with wild abandon, and as suddenly it is fall again. To many who live there, fall is the burnished crown of the year with the crisp sunny days and exhilarating, exhilarating air of the Northland with clear blue skies and drifting leaves and as far as the eye can see, the endless panorama of glorious, rich, flaming color in the turning trees. This is the country over which the three travelers passed and it was in the fall that they traveled in the days of Indian summer.